Well, welcome back to Econ 103, Introduction to Microeconomics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the walkthrough of a price ceiling. That is how to calculate the quantity exchange underneath the price ceiling, the different willingness to pay, willingness to accept. As well, we'll be conducting a surplus analysis. In this video, the expectation is that you have already looked at the price controls video. You've gone through the basics of what a price ceiling is and the theory behind it. In this case here too, we're just going to launch right into it. Uh, we're going to have the initial equilibrium already solved for as well as the initial surplus. If you want the walkthrough as to where we get these values from, please watch the price floor video as we're just following through the same functions in this case here. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into this right where we finished off with our price floor video. So when we jump screens, it's going to look really messy and then we'll clean up and we'll rediscuss from the price ceiling standpoint. So let's jump over. Let's take a look at this mess that I've just promised. Okay, so here we see, as I promised, all the mess. This was what we were looking at for our price floor. And you see the scenario laid out there before us where we have the price floor being put into place. Keep in mind, that's our minimum price. And then everything else that fell off from it. Reason why I wanted to keep it like this to start off this video was just to remind ourselves that, hey, price floor, a binding price floor is a minimum price set above the market price. And just so that we can witness here the initial quantity exchanged of 20 and the initial market clearing price of 70. Additionally, we have our initial surplus that we've created uh, that was underneath the initial equilibrium. $400 going to consumers, $600 going to producers, and $1,000 altogether to society. Okay, let's clean up. Let's restart from our initial equilibrium, and let's go through solving it, this if it was a price ceiling. So, one second. Okay, so now that we have it all cleaned up, let's restart. Here we have our initial equilibrium, as we've seen. Market clearing price is 70 quantity exchanged of 20, and our initial consumer surplus at this initial allocatively efficient equilibrium. What we're going to look at now is the imposition of a price ceiling, and that is we're going to look at a price ceiling of 40. Keeping in mind that a price ceiling is a maximum price. So of course, just like with our price floors, we have two possible scenarios. We have a binding and a non-binding price ceiling. That is, if we were to set a price ceiling, up up here, let's say this is a price of 90. Well, at a price of 90, this would have no impact on our market whatsoever. Price ceiling is saying, hey, you're not allowed to charge more than $90. Well, the market doesn't care. Our market clearing price is 70. So we would carry on with our market clearing price of 70 and our quantity exchange of 20. So no issues, no issues there. In the binding scenario, in the binding scenario, as we have demonstrated here, we would have a new legal maximum price being set. And so this would be our price ceiling, right? Always fully labeling our diagrams, price ceiling at our legislated price of 40. So now market clearing price is 70, market wants to charge 70, government saying no, 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 maximum price allowed to be charged is 40. 40. From here, well, if we take 40 over to the first line we hit, that's going to be our supply curve. Drag that guy down. We're going to be getting our quantities supplied. And similarly, take our 40 all the way over to the next one here. That's our demand curve. Drag that one down, and we get our quantity demanded. Okay. So taking a look at this just strictly as it is, we have our excess demand. Great. Now we need to go through and ultimately we're going to go through and we're going to solve for a few different things. First, we're going to solve for our quantity supplied and our quantity demanded. And we're going to solve out to figure out what that excess demand is. What's the value of that excess demand? How much more do we want versus what's being produced? We're then going to go and we're going to figure out what the black market price is. That is, in this scenario here, we have all this excess demand. People really, really want these goods. 
producers kind of have the control. They realize that and they realize that, hey, if we can sell these goods illegally outside of this price ceiling, well, we could sell them for a lot more and we'll identify what that black market price would be. After we've done that, so quantities, black market price, we will then figure out what our new surplus is, new consumer, producer, and social surplus, and we'll make the comparison between our before and the after and identify winners and losers. What we'll briefly go through but not calculate, I'll leave that to, for you for a little uh, exercise to work through, is comparing that to what the surplus would be underneath our black market scenario. That is, if black markets were to actually form, how does our surplus change in that case? We'll talk about it, but we won't calculate it. So let's get started. First, keeping in mind that whenever we have a disequilibrium, majority of the time it is the lesser of the two that becomes our quantity exchanged. Doesn't matter, we wanna buy 100 shoes if they're only making 15. I, just picking a number less than 20, right? So in that case there, lesser of the two becomes our quantity exchanged. Okay, so let's start off by figuring out this quantity supplied. How do we do so? Well, the big hint there is quantity supplied. So we take our supply function. So let's invoke that. Price equals 10 plus three Q. Well, I don't know Q, that's what I want to solve, but I do know I do know P. I do know that price is 40. So at a price of 40, right, just making that substitution, equals 10 plus 3Q. Well, I have Q. It's already consolidated. I don't have any other Qs out there, so I just need to isolate it. So let's go through the process of isolating it. 30 equals 3Q. That's just subtracting the 10 from both sides. Divide both sides by 3 and I get 10 equals Q. So okay, what, what Q is this? We have two down here. Well, we were just utilizing our supply equation, so this is my quantity supplied. So let's uh, clean this up a little bit, and let's throw in our updated value. There we go, we have 10. Let's go same process and figure out what our quantity demand is. How much do we actually wanna buy at this point? Let's just clean this up and Go through it from the demand side. So invoking our demand equation, price is 110 minus 2Q. Again, Q is what we want to solve, but we do know the price, and that's a price of 40. So 40 equals 110 minus 2Q. In this scenario, I go through my algebra a little bit differently than we did in the supply case, and that's because I don't like these negatives. I tend to drop them, I tend to forget about them, and then I make mistakes and I get the wrong answer. So I want to turn this negative into a positive, and the way I do that is I add 2q to both sides. So it's an extra step, but it keeps me from making mistakes. So 40 plus 2q equals 110, and from here, we just want to continue to isolate our q. So let's subtract 40 from both sides. 2q equals 70, divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to get q of 35. Okay, in this case again, we calculated a q, which one is it? Well, we only have one left, but outside of that, remember, we were utilizing our demand equation, so this is my quantity demanded. Similarly, well, let's go and update our graph and show our quantity demanded of 35. So thus, we have 10 supplied, we have 35 that we are demanding, so we have an excess demand in this scenario of 25 units. So a whole bunch of excess demand happening there. Great. So we figured out our quantities. Next thing we want to take a look at, as promised, is our black market price. So let's clean up again, and let's take a look at that. Okay, so in the black market, what's happening here? Well, keep in mind that legally, producers are only allowed to sell this good for $40. But if producers realize, hey, we have 10 units, we have all the control as to who we sell this to, say I sell these illegally, say I sell this in the back alley, I sell it off the truck somewhere where the government doesn't see me selling it and I can get away with it, 
Well, then I get to sell it for a different price, not necessarily $40, but I can go all the way up to the willingness to pay, right? Demand, willingness to pay. So I can take $10, or sorry, not $10, 10 units. I can drag this guy up all the way to what the suckers are willing to pay for 10 units. And that would be highest price they're willing to pay. Yeah, yeah, that's the price I'm going to charge. And I would get my price on now let's use the right tool for that i would get my price on the black market pbm for price black market okay one thing to notate it another thing to actually calculate it so how do i get my price black market well let's keep in mind what's happening here we're taking a quantity of 10 we're bringing that quantity up to the demand curve to get a price so what i want to utilize i want to invoke my demand so let's do so Price equals 110 minus 2Q. In this case, I want to know the price and I have a quantity. So let's make the substitution. Price is 110 minus 2, what's my quantity? 10, right? 10 up to the demand. So 110 minus. 2 times 10, that's going to be 20. So 110 minus 20, I'm going to get a price of 90 in this scenario. So let's update our black market price there. Underneath our black market, we would actually be selling this good for $90 a unit. So just to kind of recap what's happening here. We were initially at an equilibrium, market clearing price of 70, and we were buying and selling 20 units. That is, while we were buying and selling 20 units, people were paying $70 a unit. Government decided, hey, this is too high of a price. So we imposed a price ceiling of 40 to make it so that, hey, everybody could afford this good. Underneath a price of 40, however, suppliers are not willing to produce as much. So they're only producing 10, creating all this excess demand. If black markets are able to form these 10 units, well, they're not necessarily sold at the price ceiling price. Under the black market, they're sold illegally and they're sold for the highest price that people are willing to pay for it, which is a price of 90. So that is in this scenario, price ceiling was put into place to actually try to help consumers be able to get it for a good price. Unfortunately, it created a bunch of excess supply, making it difficult to actually get the good. Problem is if black markets then form is that Hey, you tried to help them by giving it to them for a lower price. If the consumer actually really wants to get it and is willing to go to the black market, they're actually going to pay significantly more for it than they would have at the initial equilibrium. So problematic for them. Okay, let's work out, let's work out our surplus, our welfare analysis under the price ceiling. So yes, we've just calculated this black market price. The information's there. But as we're going through all of this, what we're really looking at as our price is this guy right here. I'll make it nice and thick just so we can really see. This is our price, the price ceiling. So what we want to calculate is our new consumer surplus, our new producer surplus, and our new social surplus. Let's, uh, let's give a little bit of space here because one of these guys is going to be a little bit messy to solve and give us a little bit of vertical room to play around with it. In this scenario, I'm gonna start with the producer surplus because it's actually the simplest one in our scenario here. So producer surplus, what is that? Let's just remind ourselves again. So producer surplus is gonna be the difference between my willingness to accept and the price I do accept. Keep in mind that price is the price ceiling. So in this scenario here, I get this shaded area and that would be my corresponding producer surplus. So hey, that's just a triangle. We can do that. One half, base, well that's gonna have a base of 10, times height, well that's 10 to 40, so that's a height of 30. So in this case here, I'm gonna have a total producer surplus of $150. 0.5 times 10 times 30. Okay, what about our consumer surplus? Well, let's take a look at that guy. 
Our producer, sur or sorry, our consumer surplus is the area underneath our willingness to pay. So the price I was willing to pay up until the quantity exchanged all the way down to the price I actually have to pay. So I only have to pay price ceiling. So in this case here, I get this whole funny area. Really awkward looking shape there. Difficult to calculate the area of if we were to think about it as just this shape on whole. But what we can keep in mind with it is that it's not actually this funny trapezoidal shape. What it actually is, is a, let's take a look. We have a triangle up there on top. That's uh, this triangle right here. And then we have a rectangle. A rectangle right there. So we have a triangle. We have a rectangle. If we just find out the areas of each of those independently and then we add them together, we'll get the total area. So let's go through doing that. Starting off with our triangle. That is one half base. Well, we still have a base of 10 times height. And in this case here, the height of our triangle is 110 to 90. So that's going to be a height of 20. Uh, what does that work out to? 1 half times 10 times 20. That's going to give me 100. What's going on with my rectangle here? Well, rectangle is just base times height. So still a base of 10. Height in this scenario is 90 all the way down to 40. So that's 50 in this scenario here. 10 times 50, that's 500. So altogether, what's my consumer surplus? 100 from the triangle, 500 from the rectangle. That gives me 600 altogether for my consumer surplus. Social surplus, that's just the total surplus from everybody involved in this scenario. So in our case here, our only two agents are the consumer and the producer. So we add those two guys up. And 600 plus 150, that gives me $750 worth of social surplus. Keep in mind in this scenario here, Hey, we used to have a thousand. We now only have 750. That difference is our dead weight loss. 1,000 minus 750. That is 250. So $250 worth of surplus used to be received by society between our consumers and our producers. That is now just lost altogether. Where does this 250 show up on our graph? Well, that 250, that is this area here this triangle that we used to have and is now altogether lost to society. So a little brown triangle, that is our dead weight loss. Okay, as I said, we've done our social surplus analysis. We've looked at our welfare analysis, be the other way we talk about this. What we wanna do is we wanna identify our winners and our losers, and that is just comparing our surplus from before to after. So our consumers used to have 400, they now have 600. Our consumers, they're clearly happier. They are a winner. Producers, uh, producers have lost quite a bit. They've lost $450. They are clearly a loser in this scenario. They are upset. Society, society altogether used to have 1,000. Society is now only getting 750. Society is also a loser. So. Consumers win at the expense of producers and society. Total loss altogether to society being that 250. What about if the black market price reigned? Well, if the black market price was the corresponding price, let's just clean up our diagram here. What's going to happen in this scenario? Well, like I said, we're not going to calculate it, but what we will do is we will go through the process of at least shading it in so we can visualize it. So, Starting off with our consumer surplus. In this scenario, black market price is the price that we're stuck paying. So we're looking at everything below my willingness to pay. Let's use the right color for that. Come on. There we go. Everything below our willingness to pay up until our quantity exchanged above the price we do pay. So in this case here, we would have our black market price at 90 meaning we'd have a significantly smaller consumer surplus, just that top triangle of 100, right? We did already solve that. What about producers? What's happening from the producer side? Well, our willingness to accept up until our quantity exchanged and then below the price that we actually receive. 
Well, in this scenario, producers are selling things illegally. They're not selling them at the price ceiling. They're selling them at the black market price. So below our black market price, up to our quantity exchanged, we get this whole area here. This is going to be our new producer surplus. So we see that producers capture this whole rectangle that used to be had by the consumer. Producers are able to capture that in this scenario here underneath a black market. So in that scenario, we'd see producers winning, consumers losing, and of course, society on whole, we would still be having our deadweight loss of the same area. So a little bit of an exercise on your own. Go through, actually see if you can calculate those updated areas and see if you can figure out what's happening in that case. That does us for our price ceiling. If you have any other questions from that, please feel free to comment below. We'll leave a question on the frequently asked questions on D2L, or of course, feel free to send me an email. Thanks, until next time.